What's up, everybody? Uh, so in a previous video, I talked a little bit about ankle joint power curves. Today, I'm going to talk about hip joint power curves. And uh, I have plotted here a stereotypical hip joint power curve during walking, during the support phase of walking. Again, the support phase is just while the foot is on the ground. And I have it separated into a period of extensor power and flexor power. So um, during this period of the gait phase, the early support phase, there is a net extensor moment um, that you'll see me plot when we actually write code to, to calculate some things here. And so during that net extensor moment, we've got an extensor power. And then this is a net flexor moment. And so what we're doing when we quantify things, for example, when we pull peaks, uh, we're pulling them for two separate, uh, you could say, muscle groups, although these are taken from net moments. So it's not exactly clear that these are just coming from the flexors, uh, the flexor muscles from the joint. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you some MATLAB code that will pull the peak extensor power as well as the extensor positive, negative, and net work. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the flexors. I'll give you the um, peak positive power, the positive work, the peak negative power, and negative work. And you can see already, you know, if I were to just do something simple like take the peak positive, I would get this almost every time. However, when you start doing things like walking uphill, the extensor goes up. And so in my mind, it's really important to separate out extensors and flexors when dealing with the hip joint. Okay, so let's hop out of this and get into some code. So before uh, I do anything, I always put this here in case we're starting from scratch. I just like to clear everything out. And the first thing I'm going to do is load in a variable that, a mat, mat variable that I've already saved that contains hip, knee, and ankle joint moments and powers from a single support phase of walking. So I have this saved as joint kinetics example dot mat. So we're going to load this in. <coughs> there it is. I have it saved as a struct called vars. Within vars, there are two subfields, one moments and one powers, and then each of those contains the hip, knee, and ankle joint um, moments and powers, respectively. And those are just single columns. They're all the same length because it's from the same support phase. It's from the same step. Okay, and we can make sure that these look okay by just doing a quick plot. So I'll plot our hip powers because that's what we care about. And actually, I'll do our moment too. So We'll plot hip moments, oops, bars, uh, dot moments, dot hip, and we'll uh, make this blue, and then we'll plot just right on top of that on the same plot the hip joint powers, hip joint power, rather, and we'll make that red. Okay, so. I want to do this just to make sure everything's coming in correctly and it looks right. MATLAB's running a bit slow here. That's all right. Okay, so <clears throat> this is our hip hip moment in blue and then our hip power in red. And I'm going to maximize this just so we can see it. So you can imagine a zero line across here. And in fact, we'll just go ahead and add that. It's easy. We'll create a zero line by calling MATLAB's built-in zeros function that will be uh, one and the length of our variable. So let's run this. Oops. Oh, it's moments rather. Okay. Then we can plot this as well, and this will just make it a little bit easier for us to see. Zero line. We'll make this dashed black. All right. Go ahead and run that now and see what it looks like. Okay, so that's a little bit easier to look at, right? And what I was explaining before is, um, you know, we've got periods of extensor and flexor, so. In our lab, we quantify anything uh, 
any of these joints, hip, knee, or ankle, if they're positive, we say that those are net extensor moments, and if they're negative, they are net flexor moments. And so what we can do is we can actually subset our power curve using the joint's moment curve. So for example, I could say anywhere that this is positive, just take the joint powers during that period, find us a peak, find us positive work, find us network, whatever. And anywhere where that moment curve is negative, uh, signifying a net flexor moment, then we can say, you know, just take the joint powers from those periods and give us the minimum, the maximum positive work, negative work, and network. And so that's what we're going to do. Okay, so all of this looks good. Close that out. Let's go ahead and start with the uh, powers. These are relatively simple. So we'll say peak uh, extensor positive power. And this is going to be equal to the max of our vars dot powers dot hip. And what we care about is only the period of that hip power curve where the hip moment is greater than zero, right? So that signifies, this tells us we only care about the hip power when the moment is an extensor moment. So let's go ahead and run this, see what we get. It gives us 0.443. You know, I'll keep this plotted. I'll keep this plotted so that we can go back and check it out. So if I scroll over the peak here, 0.443. Okay, and that's what we got. So that one worked out well. And I'm sure you can already see what I'm going to do next. So for our peak flexor positive power, instead of being greater than zero on the moment curve, we want it to be less than zero. And for the peak flexor negative power, instead of taking the maximum value where this moment is less than zero, signifying a flexor moment, we'll just take the minimum. Okay, so let's go ahead and run those. And for the peak positive, we get 2.11. And then for the peak negative, we get negative 1.0. So let's go make sure these look right. This should be 2.11. And this should be negative 1.04. And that's what we got. So, okay. So our peaks are running well. That's good. Now let's hop into our mechanical work variable. Okay. So... One of the things you might be thinking is, how can I get the network? Well, the network is pretty easy because we can just call the same thing here and use the trapezoidal method uh, to integrate for numerical integration. And so let's just start with network. That's a little bit easier because when we do positive and negative work, we're going to have to subset this further to only take the positive and negative values within this subset of the power curve. And so let's start with our extensor net work. This one's gonna be a little bit easier, so we'll call tracked. And we're going to find the integral of the power curve, the hip power curve, where uh, moment is greater than zero. Again, the, this moment, as, as long as it's greater than zero, that's going to be this period here. Just look at the power during that period. And so we're taking the network across all of this. So it's going to include this period of negative and this period of positive. Okay. And then if you saw my video on ankle joint, what we also have to do is specify the rate at which we are capturing our data. So the frame rate was 100 hertz per second in this case. And we will divide this by that frame rate so that it's relative to time and not relative to frames. All right, let's go ahead and run this, see what we get. It should be a net positive. Oh, it would help if we ran this first. Frame rate is equal to 100. <clears throat> it should be net positive because if we go back and look at that curve, 0.03, it should be relatively small and positive. If we do that, it's because, you know, it's obviously this, this positive period is greater than this negative period, so we should have a net positive amount of work here. But they're both relatively small. They span small periods of time, so it's not surprising that it's 0.03.
Okay, and then we can do the same thing for flexor work. Put this down here. So for net flexor work, uh, we're going to do the same thing, except similar to our peaks, we're going to flip this. So now we're only looking at the moments where it's less than zero. Uh, it's hard to say whether this will be net negative or net positive. I think it'll be net negative. Uh, let's take a look at it. <clears throat> yeah, net negative 0.06. Let's call these hip extensors do a lot of uh, negative work uh, during the mid support and then a lot of positive during late support. Okay, so now we get into something a little bit more complicated. If we're looking for positive work, what we need to do is almost the same thing. What we need to do is take the power, the power, we need to subset it similar to what we were doing before. So we need to make sure that it's during periods only when the hip moment is greater than zero. But we also, within that period, we need to make sure that it's not only the moment is greater than zero, but also that we're only looking at the positive powers when that moment is greater than zero. And so what we can do to continue to vectorize, you know, when I first started coding, what I would, how I would solve this problem is, is I would take the, you know, the length of the hip power curve while the hip moment was greater than zero. And I would go through and look for individual points where it was positive, And I would save those into another variable. And I would do all these complicated things. You know, it, it, they're not complicated, but they're, they're time consuming. So I would run a, a for loop. And inside of the for loop, there would be conditionals. It would be saving another variable. And it would just get a little heavy. Um, but as time progresses, as you get better with coding, you learn how to vectorize some of these things, and that can really help speed up your code. For this, the code's really small. We're doing a single step. But if you're collecting data for 10 continuous minutes and you're doing this on every single step, you know, over hundreds of steps, one or two seconds can really add up when you're running code. So really try to simplify and try to vectorize and try to speed up your codes if you can. And the way that we're going to do this here is we're going to say, look for it not only when the moment's greater than zero, but also find where the vars powers dot hip or hip power in this moment curve is greater than zero. Okay, uh, and then that should call out what we want. And then we're going to run traps on that, and we're going to divide it by the frame rate. Okay, so this should just give us the positive. The positive uh, work from the ankle, uh, or sorry, the hip extensors, rather. Okay, so we can actually just plot this to make sure that it did what we wanted it to do. Let's take uh, let's take this plot here. Oops. We will. If I could copy it. I'll take this plot and let's just come down here. You know, it's always good to double check yourself. Get rid of this. Actually, let's just switch this to uh, powers. And then down here, let's go ahead and just call in the exact thing that we used up here. Let's call this in. Copy it. Paste it. And let's go ahead and plot this. And you can see here, so it's it's shifted in time because it's starting from one. But you can see that it's the, that curve is taking just these positive powers here. Okay, so that's great. So it's always good to go back and plot things, make sure they look right. Okay, so now to get the extensor negative work, what you can do is you can, we're still calling this power curve. We're still looking for where the moment is greater than zero, but now we're looking for during that period where the moment's greater than zero, where the power is less than zero. There we have it. And then we're gonna do the same exact thing with our flexors. So we'll copy here. And we'll change the names accordingly. Flexor, flexor. And in here, now all we're doing is we're saying, uh, we wanna do the same thing. So for positive, 
Uh, the only difference is now we're flipping these signs on the zero for the, for the moment. So now instead of looking for the power curve where the moment is greater than zero, we're looking for the power curve where the moment is less than zero or is a flexor moment. Okay, look at that. So all of this should run. Let's go ahead and run it here. And it does. And we should be able to just kind of go through and make sure that everything looks right. So the flexor positive work should be greater than zero. Negative work should be less than zero. Yep, network. Oh, yeah. Okay, so there we go. These are six very common uh, variables to calculate for the hip. This is uh, the network, positive and negative work, and then we also had these peaks. So these are things that are very, very commonly calculated when doing hip joint biomechanics. Now, of course, if you watch my ankle joint uh, um, kinetics or my ankle joint power analysis video, uh, you will remember that I also ran some conditionals on these. So there are some things that could trip you up. When you start walking uphill, um, you lose some of this negative work. And even during level ground walking, you can lose some of this negative work. And so if you're trying to index negative work, um, that might throw an error in your code. So you can do things like add conditionals to check for, um, to check if that actually exists or not, if there are any negative, any negative power um, data points within the extensor moment. So you can do things like that. To keep this video relatively short, I'm not gonna do that. You can go check out my ankle power video uh, and I, I use similar con uh, conditional statements in that video. Okay, if you found this useful or you liked it, please like it, please share it, subscri subscribe to my channel. I'm posting a lot of videos, not only of biomechanics related software, um, but also some of the other cool things that I'm doing. I'm doing a lot of web app development right now. I'm doing some database stuff and uh, I'll probably post some, some R data visualization stuff as well. Uh, but I'm trying to do a lot more content. I'm trying to share a lot more. If you like my content, please give me a follow on Twitter. You can also check me out on GitHub. A lot of the code that I'm making videos about is already on GitHub. And also you can check me out on LinkedIn. Alrighty. Take it easy, guys. Keep coding.